In this video, I'm going to show you 10 different ways to patch a hole in drywall, and we're going to do it right now. In many of my videos, I like to go over options of how to do things. There's not always just one way to do something, especially in construction. There's different names for things, there's different products, there's different circumstances, and that's kind of what I want to show you in this video. I'm going to show you 10 different ways to patch a hole in drywall. So step one of this video was to build a wall. This is a temporary wall for demonstrational purposes. I put studs up, I put the drywall up, screwed it in, mudded over the screws with two coats of mud, sanded it, primed it, and painted it, and I made it look as good as I possibly could for the purposes of this video. And now what I'm gonna do is smash a bunch of holes in it and use all these different methods and these different products to try and make it look as perfect as possible when I'm done. And then you can choose which one you like best or which one works for the circumstances that you have. And by the way, I am not sponsored by any products or any brands that I use in this video because I'm gonna tell you the ones that I like and I wanna be honest. So no sponsorships, no nothing, just putting this stuff to the test, letting you know what I think and then seeing what you think. So next step, let's smash a bunch of holes in this wall. So now we have our holes, one through five, six through 10. The first and second way I'm gonna show you how to patch is pretty common practice. There are slight differences between the two of them, so I'm gonna show both of them to you. If I had to give a name to this type of patch, I'm gonna call this one finding studs, because that's exactly what you wanna do. First thing you do, move this stuff out of the way. Any of this drywall I got messed up and I want to take my tape measure sometimes you can go in here and feel where the stud is and see which one's closer feels like this one is closer so I'm gonna bring my tape in here and just try and get it as straight as possible there we go now I can see right here is three and a quarter inches so now I can take my tape out and mark three and a quarter right here. And I know that that is the side of this stud. And then I do the same thing on this side. You just wanna pick a spot in the drywall. Three inches is right here. So then I can take my tape and mark three inches and I know that that is the edge of this stud. Typically, your studs will be 16 inches apart. They should be anyways, that is kind of the standard. But you might have blocking and, and whatever else. For, and for the purposes of this video, I put these very close. So the next thing you wanna do is find the center of each of these studs. Inch and a half is the standard stud. If you're in an older house, it could be a true two by four, two inches, but I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch because that should be the center if this is an inch and a half wide stud. So this is the mark that I want to use. And then over here, one, two, three quarters. So that right there is the center of this stud and that is the center of that stud. So I want to measure in between right here from that center mark to this center mark, nine and three quarters looks like it's gonna work and I want it at least go a little bigger than this I go a little beyond because some of this could be damaged as well so we'll go five inches double check this by nine and three quarters so now I'm gonna take a sheet of drywall you can usually buy these in two foot by two foot panels if you don't want to buy a full sheet nine and three quarters and the market like this, you can also use a T-square or, or whatever you might have. And then five inches. And if you don't know how to cut drywall, it is really, really easy. All you need is a utility knife. I'm gonna follow this line. Just 
just like that. Just cut through the paper on that side and tap the back side and it breaks just like this. And then you just cut the paper on this side. And there's my patch. If you're doing a larger patch, it's a good idea to take a level to plumb a line right down with the stud. The stud should be plumb. Therefore, you could stay right in the middle of that stud. This is a small enough patch where I shouldn't have a problem with that. I can just take this and line it up, put it on those marks, just like that. Just make sure the patch is covered. You just mark this. Now, what you're gonna be cutting out is this exact shape. And I'm just gonna make a mark right here with an arrow saying that this needs to go up this way so that this patch matches up. And now, all I gotta do is cut these lines. All you need to cut these is the same utility knife. You can use a multi-tool if you want, an oscillating tool, or even a sawzall if you wanted. It takes a little more effort with a utility knife but you can definitely get it done. Minimal tools. Don't worry about cutting past like this. You're gonna tape and mud this anyways. Look at that. Studs. See there's a screw right here. I can take that out. And now you just Make sure this is clear, cleaned up, and see if our patch fits. Perfect. Something that I never really do, unless there's an edge like this where the paper is starting to kind of come out like this, is taper this right here. And it's not a bad idea. That way it makes sure that mud gets in here. You can do it to this piece and the wall if you wanted, but not a necessary step in my opinion. I'm gonna use inch and a quarter drywall screws and a screw gun. You don't need a screw gun. You can do this with a hand screwdriver. You don't need a drywall gun, especially if you're just doing one little patch. I'm gonna go in each corner. And the proper way to install drywall screws is to just sink the head in just past this paper. This is too far out. I wanna sink it just a little bit more. Kinda like that. Just don't break the paper and make sure it's sunk in just enough. Now, if you're interested and you think you're gonna do a lot of repairs, they have a bit that you can attach to a screw gun. This is like a dimpler. You put your screw in here and it'll automatically stop when you are in the right place with your screw. Kind of like that. At this point, a lot of people will mud and tape this. One thing that people forget is, especially over here where you saw there was a drywall screw, there may only be drywall screws every 16 inches. So over here, this old drywall is gonna be unsecured to that stud. So what can happen is this wall can flex and that new mud that we put in there can crack. So I like to go around and secure the old drywall back to the studs, just in case. Let's talk about joint compound and drywall tape. I'm gonna try and make this kind of a condensed version because I could go on forever about this, but this might give you some ideas of what you might wanna use. First thing, paper tape. It is industry standard. It's got a little line in the middle to use in corners and it can be used on flat seams as well. Next is something that I used to use all the time and I don't use it anymore. It kind of makes me sad because this is very cool tape. This is a mesh tape and it is self-adhesive so you can just put it on the wall 
and do all your joints and then go over it uh, afterwards. But I've had some bad experiences with it. People say that you can use hot mud with this and be okay. You just don't want to use this kind of mud, which I'll talk about the mud in a little bit, but I'm just done using it completely. What I found now that I really like is called Fiber Fuse Tape. This is made of tiny glass fibers, fiberglass, squished into a drywall tape. The company claims that this is 76% stronger, makes a 76% stronger joint because the mud will go into all these little fibers and fuse everything together. And it's super, super thin, and I've had really a really great experience with it, so this is all I ever use anymore. Next up is joint compound. Blue top and green top is what they call it. This one happens to be the dust control. I like to use this for my first and second coat after the tape coat. It's really good for finishing. It's really easy to work with. It's already pre-mixed in the bucket and ready to go. I don't do my tape coat with that though. I like to use Durabond. Buyer beware. If this is your first time doing a patch like this, or you're pretty new to it, you might not want to use this. This is a powder that you mix with water and it has a chemical cure and this stuff dries like concrete or cures like concrete. So if you put too much of this on, you'll never sand it off without tearing the drywall apart. Now this, Easy Sand, this is Easy Sand 5. They have 20, 90. I've talked about this a lot in my videos. If you wanna get a drywall repair done quickly, this is what you wanna use. This is another type of chemical cure. It's a powder that you mix with water and it can dry very quickly. You can get a patch done within a day. This is Easy Sand 5, which means you have five minutes of working time to get the patch done. So buyer beware on this too, if you think it's gonna take longer than that, or if you're in no hurry, then feel free to use this stuff. It doesn't matter what you use for joint compound. The only difference is that the hot mud or the stuff you have to mix will cure a lot quicker and you can get the job done a lot faster. My only suggestion is to add a little water to the pre-mix stuff just to make it a little easier to spread. I have a six inch taping knife uh, and I'm gonna be using this, I believe this is a 12 inch knife and I'm just gonna use this kind of to hold the mud. That's how I like to do it but you don't need this for sure. Make sure there's no edges sticking up. If there is, you can cut them with a knife. That's pretty flat. I'm gonna do my tape coat. Really, really simple. Just grab some mud and cover all these seams. Get it into that crack right there. You just want to have enough mud behind the tape and then you can take your tape Lay it out like this. Just pull your knife like that. And then you can cut the tape with a knife. Or what I like to do is just rip it like that. And I'm gonna take a little bit more mud and go over this part of the tape. Just a little stick there. Take another piece. Try and get the center of the tape right where the crack is. Hold it right here and rip it. Do the same thing right here. Add a little bit of mud, another piece of tape right here. Rip it. There's plenty of mud. Piece of tape. And rip it. And then you wanna go along with your knife. You might have to hold the tape like this and drag the knife and get all the excess mud out from behind the tape and just kind of scrape this nice and tight. Something like that. I'm gonna put my first coat, this is a tape coat. The first coat is the one that covers the tape. I'm gonna put it on right now. Some people like to let this dry completely before they cover the tape. It's totally up to you and as far as techniques on how to do this stuff there's so many different ones and all I can say is the more you do it the better you'll get at it and you'll find your own technique 
I'm just going to show you how I do it and I'll try and explain it as best as I can. What I like to do on the first coat is just cover the tape. A nice thin coat, but you definitely want to make sure you cover the tape. And I'm going to fill this whole thing right in. So I'm going to go from about here to here and fill all this in. Your goal is to make this as flat as possible and taper this transition to the original wall so that it doesn't even look like there was a hole in there. So I'm going to just grab my mud. I'm going to put plenty of mud on here. You see as you do this, those air bubbles go away. And this is why I like to have my 12 inch knife is so that I can lightly go over this and try and taper this whole thing. You want to always keep whatever you're using clean. So I'm wiping my trowel down as I'm using it to smooth and I'm putting more pressure towards the wall right here and less pressure up here to try and get that tapered. And then I'm just taking off mud in the middle to try and make this somewhat flat. And I'll take my six inch knife makes it a little difficult with this hole right here. And then I'll put more pressure here, less pressure up top. Clean that up and do the same on the top. And on the sides. So that's a pretty good first coat. So now we're gonna let that dry completely. And the first coat is done. I have a light shining from the side because that is the best way to see this patch. And you can see it doesn't look great. <laughs> it might look better than this or worse, depending on uh, how much experience you've had with this. But it might look something like this. The key to doing multiple coats is to make sure that each one is completely dry before you put another one on top of it. And the other key to multiple coats is you want to just take a taping knife and kind of scrape this down in between coats and make sure there's no extra little dried up pieces that are going to fall off in your mud and make it so you end up dragging them across the surface. That will mess up your smooth finish. It'll drive you nuts. All right, second coat is basically the same thing that we did here. The more coats and the thinner the coats you do, the better this is going to look. You can always sand it, but trust me, you don't want to put on too much and sand more than you have to because sanding is not fun. Let's load this up the same way. I'm going to leave this light here because you can really see how it looks and see all these bubbles. That's because I did not mix this with water or anything. This is the pre-mixed stuff and it tends to do that. But as you start to wipe it like this, that starts to go away. And you don't have to finish with the 12 inch trowel. You can just do this, what I'm doing with the six inch. and get it as smooth as possible. And I'm going to call that second coat done. Second coat is dry. I could always do another one over this to make it even better, but I think this is going to come out pretty good. So I'm going to use a sanding block to sand this down. This is an extra fine. These are usually about 220 grit and I'm going to use a mask when I sand this just don't want to breathe this dust in basically just sand it until it's smooth I'm going to take off more in the middle and then very carefully kind of taper this edge just like I've been doing with the mud and see how it comes out just want to get this roughness out of here get these lines out of here there's a little bump right here and then be careful around here and just barely sand just to make it smooth.
All right, so I've sanded this, and if this was me, I would do another coat. This is nice and smooth, but as I run my hand over it, I can still feel the hump where I patched this in. And if you get real close, you can see I just barely hit the tape right here. I sanded off too much mud trying to get that hump to go away. So this is something that can happen. Like I said, I would do a third coat. So on this one, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, it's all sanded out and the edges are feathered like this. And now I don't have to go into all that detail on the next ones because you kind of want to apply that to any drywall patch that you do. Make it smooth, make it flat and feather the edges. Our first patch is done. It looks awesome, but before I prime it, or paint it. I want to do all of these and then I'll prime and paint the entire wall so we can see how they did. Moving on to the second patch. This is another common practice patch the way I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you two different techniques to doing it and I'm going to show you some different techniques with the taping of it. But the very first step is to get a measurement just a little bigger than this three inch by four inch. Maybe we'll do a four by four. And you can cut it from the front here too. There's another little tip. And then if you have drywall hanging over like this, you can clean this up a little bit. Just like this, try and square that up. Or you can use the side of the knife like this. Next step, I'm just gonna hold this piece of drywall like this, right over that hole. Again, I'm gonna mark that arrow, and then I'll go around with my pencil, and then I can cut this out. So the last one I cut with a knife, I'm gonna make this one easier and cut it with my oscillating tool. Easier and faster. Way easier. Right. Now I'm gonna take a piece of scrap wood and hold it like this. Enough where I can get screws into the original wall and screws into the patch. I'll put one here. Then one on the bottom. And then I would do this same thing on this side and put the patch in. But as an alternative, because I want to show you as many different ways as possible, I bought these, these drywall repair clips. You might want to use these if you don't have scrap wood laying around and you don't want to buy a whole two by four or whatever the case. Or in some cases, if you're using 5 8 drywall, this may be meeting fire code, whereas a block of wood won't. But it depends completely on where you live and, and what you're doing. Uh, what the purpose is for this repair. So on this side, I'm gonna use these clips. They just go in like this. I'm gonna put one here, one on the bottom. Are they just gonna fit? There's a note, four inch, probably the minimum amount you wanna go with these. And then you take screws and hold them about three quarters from the edge. Try and catch one of those holes in the clips. That was my fear that I wouldn't catch it. Again, never used these before. Let's try again. There we go. Got it that time. Top. Yep, that one didn't catch. Okay, now those screws are in. Now I can take my patch. Pop it in there, it sits flush here, so that's good. And then put a screw here. 
sink it in, one screw in each corner. And again, you want to try and get the screw in one of those holes here. Got it. Now you can grab these tabs and you kind of wiggle them until they break off. Like that. So now you don't have these tabs in your way. So it's basically the same as this, just a different method. Now there's some drywall that kind of loosey goosey right here. Just want to cut any of that out of here. And then I can take a hammer and where those spots missed, messed up the drywall a little bit. Just want to get it back down as flat as I can. Now I'm going to do the tape coat on here. I'm going to do the same exact thing that I just did, but I'm going to show you a couple different methods. To start, I'm going to do one piece of tape at a time. So I'm going to get that drywall mud in there like that. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape on and I'm going to use fiber fuse tape because I'm talking a big game about it. So I might as well show you what it's all about. I'm going to put it about there. And the thing I love about it is it's so thin that you don't need a ton of mud underneath it. With the paper tape, if you end up not having enough drywall mud underneath it, you could cause a bubble. But with this stuff, the mud, as you do this, it'll go into those fibers and start coming out this side. And it is much thinner than with the paper tape. So now I got one piece and some people don't overlap the tape. I just like to do it because I feel better about this not cracking anywhere here where the two pieces of tape don't meet. So I'm just gonna do that the same way on this one. This side, piece of tape right here. And the theory behind doing one piece at a time is that you can get the tape nice and tight and not have to worry about messing it up. If you go this way with the paper tape, this piece typically can get messed up pretty easy by swiping it like that. Here. If you're doing a lot of this fiber fuse tape, I would recommend wearing gloves because the fibers start coming off on your hands and it can get annoying. So now I can do a coat over this. Second and third coat is done. It's all sanded out just like this one. The cool thing about these patches is that it doesn't matter if you have a hole the size of a dime or a one foot or a two foot hole, you can use this method for any size basically. And you can spread the mud and taper it out as much as possible to make the wall look absolutely perfect. There is something that you might run into when working with this. It's a problem with your tape bubbling. So let me show you how to fix that just in case it happens to you. Here's an example of bubbling tape. On this right here, I purposefully did not put enough mud behind this tape. And you might do this accidentally where it leaves a little bubble. It can uh, be more pronounced than this, but as you sand it, you'll be able to tell. And actually, this is a good one because that is the center of the tape, so that line is showing. But you can just barely tell that there's no mud behind that. This didn't stick. This will bubble out, and as you paint it, it just won't look good. So to fix this, what you want to do is take a knife and cut out past that bubble. Make sure you go far enough where you are going to have mud behind the tape. And then you can reach back there, pull this out, and you can see bare drywall right here. 
Now, if this is a seam right here, you are gonna want to use tape again, but if not, you can just mud this in. Now, another tip when you go to touch up stuff, when you have mud going on top of mud to fix mistakes, it can be hard to see. So one thing you can do is add just a little bit of chalk. You do not need a lot. I like to use blue chalk because it's less likely to show through on the finish coat after you paint it. If you use red chalk, especially if you do a lighter color, it can show through. So just make sure you mix that up good. Now, when you go to do your patch, you'll be able to see that it doesn't even have to be very dark, but you'll definitely be able to tell that there's a patch right here that you need to sand out before you paint. And unfortunately, when you cut out tape like this, you're gonna have to do more than one coat. Now we're moving on to the next patch. And since I'm making up names for these patches, not sure if they actually have technical names, but making up names is always fun. So for this one, I'm gonna call this tapeless or winged drywall. The so first step with this is the same first step with the last one. I just wanna get an idea of how big I wanna cut this out because I'm gonna cut it out the same way. I'm gonna say four inches by four inches will work but I'm also gonna add four inches to each measurement. So I'm actually gonna cut this piece of drywall eight inch by eight inch, and I'm gonna show you why. Now the next step is to flip this drywall, and I'm gonna mark two inches all the way around this on the back side. This frame and square is two inches wide, so I'm just gonna use this and mark this. And you may have an idea of where this is going, but if you don't, this is something that I've seen and I've actually never tried before, so I wanted to try it out and see how it worked. Now I'm going to cut the back side here, like this, and then I'm going to break the drywall, snap it like that, and then I'm going to carefully peel the drywall like this so that this paper is left and that paper is gonna act as the drywall tape. That's why I'm calling this tapeless or winged. It's got a little wingy. I'm gonna do that all the way around. Well, already encountered a problem with it. Guess you gotta be more careful. Let's give that a shot. Next, I'm gonna kind of fold these down. I'm gonna mark this just like I did on the last one. Hold this over my patch. And make sure it's lined up. I'm just gonna mark around the actual piece of drywall so I know where to cut. It's okay that I'm running into my other patch here because this is sanded and basically this is just acting as the, the finished wall wood. Now I cut that square out. Good, let's test fit it. Okay, if I was doing this, I would probably add a block like that patch, but I've seen it where they just use this. I think it's good for maybe a small repair. We'll see how it holds up. So now that I know that the piece fits, I'm gonna mix up some mud and get ready to install it. Make sure all my edges are cleaned up. Okay. Make sure to put enough on, just like with regular tape. And put our patch in. Okay, let's see how this goes. A little ripping right here. 
this tape ripped a little bit, but we're gonna go right over it with mud, so. I, I got it as good as I think I possibly could. Now I'll do a first coat over all this. Well, that one worked out really well. I was able to do two coats and sand it out and it looks great. And I don't know if maybe I did a good job with the mud or maybe that's a pretty good patch because that paper is really thin. It got really close. I've never done it before, but I don't know. I might do it again. The only problem that I see is that the paper is really thin. So you saw it started tearing apart but the important place for that paper to be is over the seam where the pieces of drywall meet. We'll take a closer look at all of these towards the end of the video when they're all patched in. But now we're gonna go on to the next one, and this one I'm gonna call Just Tape. As you could probably guess by the name I'm calling this, I am just gonna use tape. One of the downfalls of this patch that I can see is that you do not wanna do a very big patch. But the key to this one is you want to try and get some mud tucked in there, kind of like that. And make sure you have plenty of it. It's gonna spill into the wall. You could put something on the backside. Um, I've seen people put insulation in there against the other sheet of drywall on the back just to hold it in place. You can do that if you want. I'm not a huge fan of this one. I've done it before but it's not my favorite. There's one piece. Try and pull this a little tighter on the back side. Okay. And then mud over that piece of tape. Again, trying to fill in that hole a little bit here. It's okay if it's not completely filled up. And pull it tight. Like this. Get it as tight as you can. And now you can put a coat over that. So with my sloppy first coat on here, you can kind of see the reason that I'm not a huge fan of this method. It's a little hard to see on camera, but if you look from the side, that tape tends to bubble out a lot of the times because it gets wet and it has no backing to it, so it's not sticking to anything back there. So it starts to bulge out this way. So you kind of got to hope that it doesn't come out too far where you can mud it and sand it and make it flat. I like to check it just before it cures all the way. And actually, it doesn't look bad. At this point, I like to just carefully Take a taping knife and just scrape off just about that much. So that will take the bubble away and if you're careful, you won't hit the tape. And now this is a more flat surface to do your second coat. This one is all set. I only had to do two coats on this one too, and it's a slightly smaller patch. And it came out pretty decent. I ended up being able to get rid of that bubble. So, not bad. Moving on to number five. This is going to be your standard store-bought patch. And there's a bunch of different kinds out there. Let me show you the three that I picked up. Three different brands, three different variations on the same idea. The store-bought patch, you can get this at your local hardware store or online. This one is an anvil, four inch patch. Basically all it is, is a very thin sheet of metal with a mesh over it. It's self-adhesive. You peel it, you stick it, you do joint compound over it, just like we've been doing. That's a four by four. They have all different sizes, like this one's a six by six. This one's a five of tape self-adhesive as well repair patch. Only difference is it's not a thin sheet of metal. It is a thin wire mesh with mesh over that. Stick it to the wall, mud it, sand it, same deal. This one, straight flex perma patch is really cool. This one is an eight by eight. And what you can do with this is it has all of these kind of guides for 
receptacles and lights. So say you cut a light out too big or receptacle too big, then you can cut what it's actually supposed to be, the size that it's supposed to be, and put this on the wall and mud around it to fix that whoopsie. But it can also be used just for a hole. And this one you could use for a big hole. This is not self-adhesive, so you would use this a similar way to just the tape. You mud the wall, then you put this on, then you mud over that, and a couple coats and sand it. But what I'm gonna use, because they're all kind of the same idea, is this four inch self-adhesive patch. So let's see how it goes. Here's the patch. You wanna make sure that this metal is going to cover the hole completely. You could put it at a diamond like this. Since this one's kind of long, that could work, but I think this will cover. All you do is peel this and stick it. Easy peasy. Now we mud it. I was able to just do two coats on this one and it came out really good. Moving on. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna show a patch where you don't need to buy a sheet of drywall, you don't need a bucket of joint compound, you don't even need tools. All you need is an all-in-one wall repair patch kit. This is a DAP and it comes with everything that you're gonna need. So the kit comes with spackling, this is the dry time indicator kind where it goes on pink and it dries white. Apparently, depending on the scenario, it can dry as quick as 25 minutes. That's pretty cool. It has a patch. This is a five inch. We'll do holes up to four inches because you need a little bit here to stick to the wall. You have your putty knife for the spackling and it even has sandpaper. And it's got instructions too, but you don't need that. You got this video. So to start, just like all the other ones, make sure you don't have any drywall sticking out. Sand it if necessary. I'll clear off all the dust afterwards. I'm looking good. Now this is not self-adhesive, so if it was me, I would take the spackling and just put it on the wall like this, but I am gonna follow the instructions to a T with this stuff. So what they tell you to do is take the spackling and apply it to the back side of the patch. So I'm gonna take my spackling and I'm gonna hold this patch right here. And, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try and get it on the back side here. That's interesting. It's like it doesn't wanna to stick to it. I'm gonna load up the back, there we go. This is what they tell you to do in the instructions. Okay, now I'm gonna grab it and make sure that it's covered. Flip it and then push it into place. Try and squeeze some of that pack spackling out. Try and get it as close to the wall as possible. And now we can go over this with more spackling. And I'm gonna try and do the same thing, feather it out, blend it in. Might have to do a couple coats. I'm curious to see how this stuff sets up. A little harder to do with a small putty knife. That's okay. At least you didn't have to buy one, right? The spackling is kind of just a little thicker. The consistency is a little thicker than joint compound. It's not too, too bad to work with. Let's see if I can smooth it out using this two inch putty knife. Yeah. That's as good as I could get. A little harder to work 
with then joint compound and a six inch knife. But we're gonna make it look as good as we possibly can. So we'll let that dry. Okay, so on the package, it says 25 minutes to cure. It also says it depends on the circumstances. We are in a basement. It might be a little more humid. And I did put it on kind of thick because I'm trying to smooth this out. This has been four hours and you can see in the middle, it is a little wet still, but I'm ready to second coat this. If you look close, you can see the outline of the patch and you can even see the holes on the bottom here. On the top, you can't. Maybe if you have textured walls, this would be easy, but it's definitely not a quick patch. I was hopeful, but definitely not a quick one. All right, I'll see what I can do with this. I'll start to try and carefully scrape this. Oh boy. Well, this stuff is not very, oh. And it can be pushed right in. I guess it's just not very strong. Let me just get the high stuff off. I'll do another coat and then I'll let it dry overnight and maybe it'll be more solid than this. We'll see. And you know what? If you don't want to do it this much, you think it's good enough with a, you know, without tapering it, that's fine. I'm just trying to make it look as good as possible. Maybe people just want to buy this patch, patch it up real quick. They're tired of looking at a hole and they don't want to put a lot of effort in and um, just make it good enough for them. And that's totally fine. The whole point of this is to try and make this wall perfect at the end of this video. Okay, well, I think I have surprised myself. That looks pretty good in my opinion. We'll see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, so second coat I let dry for a full day, 24 hours. So let's take a look. I'll start by just kind of checking how hard this stuff is. There's some bubbles, not the best finish in the world. It scrapes off really easy. Okay, so let's check this. And that is still flexible. So I can push that in still. I guess that's just how it is. Now that's okay for the patch it is, it is what it is, right? So I'm just gonna carefully scrape down the high spots to make it easier to sand. And I'll try and make a second coat look good. And if I can't, I'll do a third coat. Remember, I'm only using the tools that they gave me in this package. And then I'll use my tiny piece of 100 grit sandpaper and see what I can do. So second coat all sanded out, did my best to make it smooth, and I'm actually really impressed. There's some minor imperfections in it, but overall, not bad. I'm gonna clean up this putty knife, and I am actually gonna do a third coat. There is plenty of putty left in here, or spackling left in here, which I was worried that this wasn't gonna be enough, but it looks like it is. So I'm gonna clean this putty knife up, and I'm gonna do one more really thin coat over this whole thing to get all those imperfections out. And I'll sand it out and we should be good to go. Okay, I did my best. That's as good as I'm gonna get it. And honestly, that looks pretty good. And as a note, this stuff says that you don't have to prime this. You can just paint it. So that's good to know. But we're not gonna paint any of these yet until we're done. Next up is another all-in-one repair kit. This is a high strength, large hole repair kit from 3M. Let's see how this one does. So this one is a little more unique. It has a different design where this actually goes inside of the wall and this is double-sided tape and that sticks to the back side of the wall. There's a little piece of mesh tape. I'll show you how to use that. You have your putty knife, a nice wide putty knife, which I like. And this is for 
large hole repair. This is fiber reinforced spackling. So it comes with that and it comes with a sanding sponge. It's kind of nice that it's not just a piece of paper. And of course, it comes with instructions. You should keep these ones because these are kind of specific, but I'm gonna follow them exactly. So maybe, yeah, you don't need them. So my first step was actually to make this hole just a little bit bigger. And I know that seems a little counterproductive, but you actually have to take this and fold it and put it in the hole to get it to the backside. When I peel that off, I don't want it to stick to itself. So that's something to keep in mind. You might have to make the hole a little bigger if you're using this. So now what I want to do is I have to get all this drywall off, try and peel it off of the backside. Remember, you can't go behind your wall like you can with this one. So I'm going to do this all from this side. These double-sided tape pads have to actually stick to that. They need something good to stick to. Now I'm going to take a knife and clean up this edge. Now I'm going to take the sandpaper and just sand down these edges and make it as smooth as possible. Now I can take this, it has a strap right here. I'm going to use that to pull this against the back. First, you want to take these off. Try not to get any dust on here. And then I'm going to fold this up. Sneak it in here. Try and open it up. Make sure it's going to cover the hole. And then kind of like that. I'm just going to pull it. I'm going to put pressure on this for about 30 seconds. You can also grab this with the hole that's right here and put a little more pressure on the sides. And it does say that the paper on the back of the drywall needs to be intact for this to adhere. And I know because I can see it that that is not the case for me, but you might not be able to tell because you can't see inside your wall. So that might be a downfall. Hopefully it will stick even though the paper was kind of torn on the back there. Once that's done, you can take this strap and push it through. Now this hole, you want to make sure it's covered. That's what this mesh tape is for. Cut it right here. This is self-adhesive. Just cover that hole like so. Now I'm going to take my putty knife and my high strength large hole repair compound that is fiber reinforced. Open that up and now I'm just going to grab this stuff and fill this hole in. Oh, it is much more fluffy than I thought it would be. Okay, this is really easy to spread. So I'm going to make sure that it kind of pushes through that mesh back there. Now I'm going to wipe this putty knife clean. And what it says in the instructions is to wet this putty knife down in between each stroke and try and smooth this out. It doesn't say to let it dry first. So I guess I'm just going to be careful and see if I can make this a little smoother. It says to use a very low angle, which I'm guessing is this and not this. All right, so I'm making a mess here. I can't seem to get that smooth by using the water on the putty knife technique. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this off and pretty much just leave it where it covers the hole like that. I'm just going to wipe off any of the water and the excess compound here. And 
I'm gonna let that dry overnight, like it says in the instructions, and probably going to do a second coat over it, and then I'll let it dry and sand it out. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and it is nice and solid. Now I'm just gonna do another coat over it, try and overfill it just a little bit. I just wanna be able to smooth it out and fill in the edges there. I'm not gonna taper it like the other stuff. I'm just gonna fill it in flat and see if I can sand it out. So after a little experimentation with this, the water trick that they suggest, I'm not really great at it. Either I don't know what I'm doing or it doesn't work that well. The best thing I can find is to hold this really close like this at an angle like this and really tight. And it makes it pretty smooth. Okay, that's sanded out nice and smooth and flat. And it looks pretty good. There's just a couple imperfections. I don't know if it's the fibers or maybe there were a couple chunks in the compound. But really, it came out pretty good. And it's a much smaller patch than the rest of them, which is nice. So, moving on. Can't believe I'm actually doing this. Okay, next, I'm gonna use something that I've seen and it involves a product that I despise. What is it, you ask? Spray foam. If you follow my channel, you probably know I really don't like spray foam. But I saw this technique and it's, I guess it's kind of cool, but I will say that another one that I saw with spray foam that's absolutely useless and I don't recommend and I'm not gonna show you is to do a patch like the second one where you cut out a square and you cut it, cut the patch a little smaller and you do your blocking and then you fill the crack or the seam with spray foam and then you wait until the spray foam hardens you cut it off and then you mud over it just like a normal patch. My opinion, absolutely useless because you gotta wait for the spray foam. Paper tape is cheap. I don't understand the appeal to that one or the benefit of that one. So I'm not gonna show you that one, but what I will show you is one that involves spray foam, packing tape, a paper clip, <laughs> all kinds of MacGyver type stuff. So let's get into it. Step one, try and get all the loose drywall, just like with the other patches. So the next step would be to tuck some maybe fiberglass insulation in here or some newspaper. Basically, you want to have something that will stop the spray foam from just going into this cavity. Uh, this is not a normal wall, obviously. There's nothing back there to hold anything in there. So I'm gonna put some packing tape on the back side here and that will represent whatever you decide to tuck in your wall. Now I'm gonna put packing tape on this side. Make sure it's gonna stick. Okay, there's two pieces should do it. Make sure they're stuck together and stuck to the wall. So now I'm gonna take a pick tool. You can also use a paper clip, is what I saw a lot of people doing. And I'm gonna heat it up. And then I'm gonna put a little hole in here about the size of the spout of the spray foam. Just a little hole like that. Let's shake up our spray foam really good. That'll make a difference. I'm just gonna fill this up. Okay, this should be all I need. Maybe I put too much in, but that'll fill all of this and it'll attach itself to the drywall. We'll see how it comes out. On the can, the spray foam says eight hours to dry. I actually let this go overnight and it seems pretty solid. So 
I'm going to clean this up. This mess that spray foam makes, one of the reasons I don't like it. We don't have to keep talking about it. Um, and I'm going to very carefully peel this packing tape and try not to peel the paper off of the drywall. Now, if I had one of those breakaway knives that are really long, the utility knife, I would be able to cut this. That might be the best way to do this. I think a flush cut saw like this is probably going to tear the drywall up. So what I'm going to try and use is just a coping saw blade. And then I'll just try and cut this as flush as possible. I don't want any of this spray foam sticking out this way. I'm trying to bend this a little bit so that I can take off a little more spray foam so it's so the mud will be set back a little further. Can you sand spray foam? I don't know. Let's see if I can get this off. Oh yeah. Wow, that worked good. So let me sand this a little bit. Make sure there's no pieces sticking out. And the idea with this is the spray foam is gonna stick to the drywall, and now my mud will actually go over this, and hopefully it will stick to the spray foam, which is stuck to this, which will make this a decent repair. I don't know, we're gonna try it. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for a first coat. You can see some spray foam sticking out here, but I wonder if I could sand that off afterwards. I'll probably do a second coat over this. The first coat is pretty much dry. The only thing that I could see that might have a problem here is that some of this foam seems to be sticking out a little bit. So I'm gonna try and sand this patch down more flat and then I can do a second coat. good let's move on next this one is super quick and easy will it hold up I don't know all it is is basically a sticker a thin sheet of plastic that has an adhesive back and first you clean up the hole which I've already done just like any of the other ones make sure there's no roughness around it and then we'll open this right up it is literally just a sticker. They have four inch and six inch. I wanna make sure it's gonna cover just barely. And then you want to peel this off like this, exposing all of the adhesive back. And then just stick it over the hole. Press it into place only where it touches the drywall. So they tell you to paint this immediately and do a nice thick coat of paint. I think what the attempt is, is this right around here, this edge, you wanna fill in basically this drywall so that it's at this height. Uh, and then you peel this off, you don't do it yet, but you paint right over this and then you peel this off and then you do two more coats of paint on top of this. So I think that is the attempt to kind of blend this in. Try and do a thick coat here. Okay, let that dry. Now is actually a good time to talk about painting these patches in. And my suggestion is to, even if it's a small patch, to prime and paint the entire wall again. And the reason for that is because the patch will probably show through if you just paint it. If you prime and paint just the patch, what can happen is something called flashing where this might look like a different sheen than the rest of the wall at certain angles. There's techniques like dry brushing where you try and taper it out and you can try that. 
but it might just be easier to repaint the entire wall. And if not, that's up to you. And actually, before we move on to the last patch, as per directions of this patch, I'm going to let this dry completely and then pull this tab and peel off that protective layer. And then I'm gonna prime and paint this entire wall. I'm gonna grab this tab and carefully peel off this layer all the way around. That should look something like that. And then you wanna at least do two coats over this but I'm gonna do primer and paint. So I'm using Kills PVA Primer, and this is water-based, and you can paint it in two hours. I like this stuff. Now that your primer's dry, it's a good idea to just lightly sand your entire wall before you paint. That way, if you have any dust or debris that was in the roller that got stuck to the wall, it won't show through the paint. Primer also tends to highlight any imperfections in your patch, so you might have to touch some stuff up. And if you look over here, you can see that it almost re-wetted the spackle here, and it's bubbling out, and some of the patch just kind of came out right here, and this doesn't look great. I don't think that's going to be a very good finish, but I'll try and sand that along with the rest of the wall and see how it comes out. The wall is primed and painted. And now we're going to talk about our last patch, our 10th patch. This one is dealer's choice. It's whatever you want to do. If you don't like any of these ones I showed you, and you don't care if it looks perfect, you can tuck some insulation in it. I've seen people put steel wool in there, fill it up with caulking. There's an endless amount of ways you could patch this up, and it's all up to you because after all, it's your house. And when all else fails, you can always just hang a picture over it. Now let's go over each patch and I'll let you know my thoughts. Number one, finding studs. Very common in the industry, and I've done it a lot, and I'll continue to do it. It worked out very well. It does require a little bit of skill, and it could get expensive depending on how many tools you actually have. Same thing with the second one. Whether you're using blocks or clips, those clips were kind of cool, never used those before. Those are an easy thing to throw in your toolbox if you're doing a job somewhere, or throw them in the drawer if you're doing stuff at your house. There is actually a product on Amazon. It's an entire kit that you can use to do this at a relatively low price. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. Number three, tapeless or winged. This was probably my new favorite. I like that the drywall paper is really, really thin so I could get it close to the wall and it actually came out really great. Number four, just tape. I have never really been a fan of this because of the bubbling of the tape, but it is a pretty easy patch to do. And it ended up coming out okay. Number five, store-bought patch. Super quick, super easy, besides the coats of mud, and I guess it depends on how good you are at mudding, but it came out great. I was able to do it in two coats. Number six, the all-in-one DAP repair patch kit. I love that it's all-in-one, but I don't love the type of spackle. The finish does not look great. You're able to see this entire patch, and I think the primer and the paint actually re-wetted the spackle and brought pieces of it up and into the primer and the paint. It just does not look that great. It's a little more inexpensive, but for my money, I would spend it somewhere else. Number seven, the other all-in-one repair patch kit from 3M. This one, is another one that I was surprised by. It's pretty cool because you put that plastic mesh on the backside of the drywall. That way you don't have to make a huge patch because you don't have to taper it out far because there's nothing on top of that hole to make it stick out. That one I'm impressed by and it's pretty inexpensive and DIY friendly. Number eight, spray foam. It came out really good and I hate that it came out really good. I don't like spray foam, 
but the idea is simple. Same kind of idea as number seven. Nothing was put on top of the patch, so it was even with the drywall. And once I put that mud on there and sanded it, it just it came out really good. I'll give it to you, spray foam. Number nine, the DAP Eclipse sticker patch. This one, I'm torn because though it is the cheapest and it is the easiest one of all these patches, it probably isn't gonna come out that great. I think it's great if maybe you were gonna hang a mirror or you were gonna tile a backsplash or there's just a quick patch that you needed to do because you got a party coming up or something, but it's definitely not a high level, beautiful patch for a wall to make it look perfect. But if it's gonna work for you, then I'm happy I showed it to you. One more thing I wanna do, there is no way that I am gonna know how this does five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, but I wanna do some kind of test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bump test. I'm gonna use a rubber hammer to just give it a little bump. This will maybe simulate a piece of furniture or a hip bumping into the patch. I wanna just smash something anyways, so let's see how they do. This patch, the center is right here. Before we give it a little bump, I'm just gonna push on each of these patches. This one is solid. As expected, let's give it one little bump. Nice. No cracking, looking good. The center of this one is right here. Before I give it a bump, let's give it a push. Cool, solid. Let's see. No cracking. Number three. My new favorite. Let's see how it holds up. Push test. Let's see a little wiggling. A little bump. No cracking. Nice. Number four, right here. A little push. This is just the tape. Solid, a little bump. Looking good. Number five. Push. Ah, this one's moving. Let's see how it does with a bump. Ah, it dented. Ah, it dented. center of this one it's right here let's see if it moves now yep still moving a little bump yeah nice big dent on this one I am not impressed one of my other new favorites right here a little push looking good a little bump Oh no! That's so sad. I guess it's not that strong after all. Spray foam. A little push. C. Little bump. I mean, come on guys. Think that's gonna work? It looked great, but now it doesn't. Next one, I don't even have to mark because I can see the patch very clearly. If I give it a little push, yep, that's what it's gonna look like. And of course, a little bump. Huh, the bump actually wasn't bad. But that's not great. But there you go. After the push and the bump test, I'm not surprised by any of the results really, except for this one, one of my new favorites. Unfortunately, it's not that strong. I knew this one wouldn't do too well. I knew these ones would do really well. <laughs> no comment. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope there was a ton of information that you learned. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to jam pack it with as much as I knew about this stuff. 
And if you're interested in supporting my channel, you can do so by joining my Patreon page, or you can click the join button below to join YouTube memberships. I would really appreciate it. And as a bonus, I have a ton of behind the scenes footage up there and I keep uploading it and it's all really fun stuff. So if you're interested, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. So you're in high school, you just threw a party, somebody busted a hole in your wall and you're trying to fix it, but the mud isn't drying quick enough. Well, I got the solution for you. Let's run this bad Larry for a while. A little paint, hang a picture. Parents will never know. You could use a trash bag, a rag, flex tape, dirty diaper. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little later in the video, I'm rambling. Let's try that one again. A deck of playing cards, a piece of bread. Nobody likes the end slices anyways. It's 92 degrees outside. Why is the heat coming on? <laughs> Does all that make sense? I wanna talk about bro, wanna talk about bro. Number one, oh brio bro. Let's retake that. Oh my God, come on, Matt. Good. I think. I don't know if that hurts that close enough. Hey. A He-Man figure. An old cell phone. Dr. Mario on the Game Boy. I'm just trying to show you all the different ways that you can do this. The first coat is pretty much dry. The only thing I can see here that might... The only thing that I could see the only thing that I could see that might have a problem here is that some of this foam seems to be sticking out a little bit. So I'm gonna try and sand this patch down more flat and then I can do a second coat. Top Gun's, <laughs> Top Gun soundtrack on cassette. Chattering teeth. If you wanna see another video like this, click here or here-ish and check it out. And as always, thank you for watching. That's not gonna be in there because I have like 20 minutes of outtakes. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, maybe, maybe I shut the up. Start it over. <laughs>